And hello and welcome to an all new and hopefully walking episode of Dwarf Fortress. Only real with a big black bar <laughs> at the center of this thing. Maybe I can show it around. No, you should have the black bar on the upper side. Okay, this is, this is clearly not working. Yeah, I, I still need to figure out how to do it now. Um, as you know, my game crashed and... It crashed every time I started recording. Now it seems to work, but I have this black bar issue again. I had that in the beginning of this Let's Play, but sucked. I solved it. Wait, anyway, as you can see, it happened once again. A giant tries to attack our fortress, and this time it's the giant Aza Kwachiko Hostizuku, a gigantic creature resembling a human, almost unparalleled in size. Also known as Cannon Fodder. <laughs> Cannon fodder for our dwarves. So, what are we going to do this episode, you might ask? Well, first off, let's kill a giant. Or let him walk into one of our traps. Um, we will see. You know what? I'm just putting... Um, Brummi. No skin. And... Zeriofo. In here. Oh no, Tracker! Tracker! Because he's our new Baron. Let's show how a Baron can fight. <laughs> and um, once we kill him, we will start a Dwarven Daycare. Because right now, all these children playing around everywhere are creating a huge ping issue. And we kind of need to take care about that. And if you have played a game before and you know what a Dwarven Daycare is, please don't spoil it for everyone. Anyone? Uh, welcome to the seven frames land here. Um, yeah, please, please don't, st please don't spoil because um, it's going to be a bit of a surprise for new players, I guess. <laughs> that you will find out. Okay, we are running around with five frames here, six frames. Okay, um, let's start the first console thing. Um, clean all. Clean owned. Um, fast dwarf one zero. I know it's a sheet, but I guess you don't want to just sit here and watch my dwarfs moving one step every five seconds. <laughs> oh, game is paused. Right hand English has begun a mysterious construction. All right, I didn't even use that someone boss. In a strange mood. Anyway, let's get my stingers up here. PBM. Let's go. Yeah, the problem with the ping rate right now is, is that I have too many dwarves and I duck too deep. And another problem is that I have this huge hole here. And it's going to, if I'm looking at this, it's going to calculate everything all the way there down here. So I need to uh, put up floors um, into all of this. I already started, as you can see, but well, as you know, right now we kind of have other problems. Oh, I ran out of copper. Didn't use that. Maybe he just cannot reach it. Let me just make breast plates. All right. So let's have a look at our uninvited guest. Oh, the human scholar is doing research now. That's great. And here he comes. The giant. Aza Mintsweet is a breach of harvesting. Well, he doesn't sound too um, dangerous. <laughs> Mr. Mint. Okay, let's have a look. So, Dwarven Daycare. Of course, children are really loud, so um, we want to have our children as far away as possible from our regular fortress and that is why I am going to put the Dwarven Daycare down here deep in the mines and here we go and just dig out this area and dig out 
Ah, damn it. Could be that this is not working. Okay, dig out this area. Come on. Still kind of bad, but better than nothing. And here they are standing, our mighty warriors. Brummy, which is puking. <laughs> because he's standing in the sun. Norskin. And Trekker, the Baron of Smithsaved. Who's hopefully still watching the Let's Play. <laughs> Otherwise, he is missing a lot. Okay, let's have a look at where he currently is. Oh, there's a dog skeleton. Litas Limolinus. Alright. Didn't even notice that I lost the dog out there. I don't even know how. How are our jabbers looking? They are both trained. Nice. So I can soon start them using, in a mil using them in the military. Just, I guess I just click around a bit here in the fortress until the giant arrives. Um, you, of course, know all about my arena. I guess I will just show arena fight in the end of this episode. Because I cannot do a rooster or bone pick. Oh, nice. This sounds like something um, an arena fighter should use. Yeah. Because, as you can see, everything is going super slow because of our ping issue here. So we kind of need to do something about that. Why are... Why is all the stuff just lying around there? Oh no. That's because I never... bullet cabinets for them. Let's do that really fast. Because, um... Closes that are lying around are actually taking a lot of your frames. Um, closing is one of the m main issues while you are losing. Wait a second, let me turn down the music a lot. Um, closing is one of the main issues why you will lose frames because it um, they are decaying and or well, are getting rare as the games calls it <laughs> and. Because of that process, um, it's constantly calculated how much wear they have on them. And because this is, of course, a single threading game, um, it actually takes away a lot of your of your processing power. That's why you should always clean your own eggs at least once a year. Because then they are throwing away all the items that have at least one X wear on them. And clean owned, because sometimes your dwarves are carrying around stuff that they shouldn't carry around, uh, which is also always calculated. Why has Bartol two babies and is sitting in... Oh yeah, because I didn't put this up as an... As a bedroom for the tavern. That's alright. Soon our baby problems will be solved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is actually the main reason why you shouldn't play Dwarf Fortress with graphics and settle down for Dwarf Fortress with the Dwarf Therapist um, because they have um, um, a 32 bit version. This is a 16 bit version here. Yeah? So um, it goes a lot better, it goes a lot faster, and you don't need to worry about these issues. Oh, you're standing here destroying the door, I guess. So I guess we are. Getting a bit closer on him. Let's go. I'm telling all of them to attack. In the end, only the ones that are actually there will attack, so not a problem. Thomas doing us to go up here. Maybe they can do something. But they are too slow. Because here he comes. Bromi is leading the attack and he's kicking open the door, running straight to the giant and starts stabbing him. The giant attacks, he rolls away. 
strikes jetzt das Wort aus, das blockt. With uh, Bido Sakil, Itenun. Is this his weapon? No, this is his shield. And the swordsmaster misses, and but then he attacks with a back swing, and he hits him in the left lower leg, and he tears apart the skin. And Baron Smithavis bashes the giant in the right leg with his steel mace, fracturing the bone. Bam! One leg cut open, the other one is smashed, and crossbow bolts are flying in, and uh, Runpa the recruit is also in the fight, and that's it. Very, very short fight, <laughs> and as soon as... Oh, I nearly said the wrong name, not Zilev, as soon as Norton comes in and starts hitting him with his Bronx scimitar, he is just being taken apart into small bits, and in the end, Norskin, the swordmaster, stabs the giant in the head with his steel short sword, tearing the muscle, shipping the skull, and tearing the brain at the tendon, and the skull has been torn, and that's it, that's the end for the giant. And here we go, and <laughs> one of you asked me to put um, Forgotten Beasts and big enemies, slain enemies, on top of the tower. Uh, that is exactly what we are going to do here. After we are putting up the locks, the right locks, where are they? Spot tree. No, tunnel tube, tunnel tube. Uh, floor H U Oh, doesn't work this way. This is a bit stupid. Uh, okay, tunnel tube. Here we go. More tunnel tubes. K U M. More tunnel tubes and more tunnel tubes here. So um, the way you could bring up your slain enemies, of course, is to put up a dumping zone here and then tell them to dump. But that is quite unreliable. That's why we are going to do this with a nice console command, because the end result is the same basically. Just click him, hit D. Click where you want it, and then type in your dwarf hack auto dump. And here we go. Okay, they dumped more than I wanted to, but just let's go and dump these in a real place, in a real dumping place. I'm okay with that. What were you doing upstairs there? Oh yeah, you were on your way, I guess. Yeah, this bomber, the militia captain. <laughs> this thing is halfway on the way up to the enemy area. Has a fissure dwarf tracker. Tracker hit him actually a lot of times, but only fractured the skull. But I guess the skull was fractured enough so a bolt could stab him into it. And I am deactivating the alert. Okay, let's see how much time I have left. Um, as soon as the Dwarfish Daycare is open, I will, of course, <laughs> restart recording. But I kind of don't want to miss giant fights. They're not really difficult anymore because, well, we have a good military, but... Still, if, if a giant would come in and just, with the first attack, smash someone in the head and his head will uh, fly over the map or something. I would be very very sad if I wouldn't record it. <laughs> so okay let's go to the arena. Uh, let's have a nice arena fight. Wait a second. Didn't I hit a hot K for the arena? Doesn't seem so. So I need a hot K for the arena. Okay, let's go. Who is going to do it today? I think we are going to have... Um, we are going to check all of our favorite noblemen. A pumper is basically a champion. At least that's what he will be. Um, as, soon, as soon as the Baron of Smith saved rises above the grade of a baron 
we will become a uh, champion because then I have actually the opportunity to name him champ champion. Okay, Tracker will be here. Um, the Mary, of course, as a militia commander, she should always be in a fight. And one of our ex lords, Norskin, anyone? Some of the stingers? The law. No, I definitely really shouldn't be in any fight. So, this will be three of our dwarves against five, six crundles and four blind cave ogres. Uh, the blind cave ogres are okay enemies. If you, you don't have weapons, they are deadly enemies. Uh, so far, Herr Pumpe is the only one that isn't running around with a weapon. And here comes Numeria. So, where's Trekkard? Still waiting for Trekkard. It's quite easy to spot because Trekkard. Uh, is actually now running around with the Baron. Looks. I think I made a mistake here, I just noticed. Normally there should be doors here. So let's remove these cage traps as soon as possible. But first off, let's close the arena. And here should be a bridge. Good thing I noticed. <laughs> okay, pull this lever. And pull this lever. And let the fight start! Let the fight begin! Why was Bromi in a fight? Oh yeah, because... He's still in a bad mood. Wait a second, he had a bath? Why? How? I didn't set up any dwarf tops. Uh, bath tops. I had a bath. I'm not contented. Are they just... I think they're just running in here. To take a bath. Uh, Alright, I guess. <laughs> that would explain why my soap is disappearing. Because my, my dwarves are actually bathing. And I didn't set them up for bathing. Why is he blinking? Oh, he's dizzy because of the sun. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, you don't know about these guys. Um, these are crundles. Um, if you've ever seen South Park's episode with the crab people, this is basically what a, what a crundle is. Um, they are really not um, hard to fight enemies. The problem is that they are running around in the caverns in really, really big packs, and sometimes they will attack. And if you have like a single, not a woodcutter, woodcutters have axes, but I don't know, a herbalist picking up mushrooms in the caverns, they can be really, really deadly. And I lost a lot of dwarves to crundles. So if you have like a huge group of, of crundles running around, always try to kill them. Don't be like, oh yeah, it's just crundles. I, sh I can totally ignore them. Why is the bridge not going up? It's the wrong lever, isn't it? Okay, I'll leave this one on, just so I know that this is actually for this bridge. It's also how I noticed right now that I put it up in the wrong order. Okay, here we go. And it's off! And who will be the first one to fight the ogre? What? Oh no, it's just the cage. I thought the, the cage the cage trap snapped and I wasn't looking. Because <laughs> that can happen sometimes. Oh! And Tracker is the first one to spot them, and I guess I need to set the others as attack these guys, please, too. Because it looks like uh, they are just not seeing them. Because of these pillars. But Trekker is of course running right in. That's what he does. Her pump is already seeking out the biggest of the ogres. Because that's kind of his thing. And Trekker is in the middle of the fight. Uh, this was just a giant fa fight. Uh, here, here we go. And the <laughs> um, Trekker of Baron of Smithsafe, this those injuries this doesn't scare me. And the Baron of Smithsafe stands up. The blind cave ogre misses uh, Baron. And he hits him in his left hand, bruising the muscle, and then he bashes right again after that. And his left little arm, and he, fracturing the bo he fractures the bone. And he hit the cave ogre attacks, but he's just jumping away. And now he's in the midst between four cave ogres. Hitting again. And he's entering a state of 
I'm going to fight you all. The Baron of Smithsafe Bashes. Bashes the blind cave ogre in the neck with his teammates, bruising the muscle, tearing the upper spine's nervous tissue. So that's it for the blind cave ogre, I guess. And he punches him again, left hand, bru bruising the bone. He punches again. He punches him in the upper right back teeth with his right hand and the severed part flies off in an arc. <laughs> and then he's just bashing him and in the arm and the legs, um, fracturing and chipping the bones. So this cave ogre is, cave ogre is in a, quite a bad position here. His spine is broken, his upper spine is oozing cave blood, ogre blood. So cave ogre blood everywhere, teeth flying around. And of course in the midst of all of it, Charkis and Herr Pumpe. Herr Pumpe in general, a very, very good fighter. And now our, our good old Baron is standing in the midst of three ogres and is just bashing around the cave ogres. Are being smashed by the mace. This guy lost his right foot and most of his attachments. Oh, that's actually a girl, but I'm cave ogre baby. Um, all right, yeah, um, <laughs> that happened, I guess. <laughs> so let's have a look at the first plane cave ogre that forked, chipping the bone, fracturing the bone. Bruising the guts. And the wrestler punches the blind cave ogre in the lower arm with his left hand bruising the muscle. So as you can see he's only bruising him. They all have fractured bones and here the Baron of Smith safe bashes the blind cave ogre in the right hand with his steel mace, jamming the bones through the right wrist muscle and shipping the right wrist bone. Oh ah, those, those are gruesome wounds. Yeah, that's the first one that went into the fight. Okay, let's see. And the wrestler punches went to cave over an upper body, bruising the muscle, slashes him, tearing apart the muscle. Artillery has been opened, motor nerve has been severed, and the weapon has been lodged firmly in the wound. Militia captain pulls out his sword. And the wrestler punches a blind cave ogre in the left upper arm with his right hand. Okay. He's still fighting, but. I think um, he named his weapon. Yes, he did. Oshentuvil Morosil, Chant Flight, the Uncommon Fire, a steel short sword. It wasn't named before he killed the cave ogre, so. No, it's, it's Tarkis. He wasn't in the fight with the cave ogre. So, alright. But he has a named weapon. Nice. Our first named weapon. And it's a steel short sword. Okay, a pumper keeps. Kicking and fighting the cave ogre, and his <laughs> right lower arm has been cut off. And I think it's time to let in the Crundles! While well, the fight is still going, and Trekker is still in his martial trunks, fighting everyone and everything that comes too close to him. And it will be him and Nimeria fighting the Crundles. Let's have a look how the cave ogre baby died. The Baron of Smith safe punches the cave ogre baby in the right lower leg. Pump operator scratches the blind cave ogre baby in the head, tearing the fat, bruising the muscle, fracturing the skull. He slashes him and the upper body and its cloven asunder. Artillery has been opened by the tech, and tendon in the middle spine has been torn. And that's it. No, that's not it because now the crondles will be released. Attack of the Crundles. And her pump is just like, ha ha! Step away, Trekker! I know you are my Baron, but I will be the one that is defeating the Crumbles. Not the Crumbles, the Crumbles! And Trekker is like, oh yeah, I'm stepping back. You do it with Nymeria. And also, is Nymeria leaving? Why is Nymeria leaving? Nimeria should be around here. I mean, a pump, a pump will be totally be able to destroy all the scrundles. 
just that I want to have him around. Oh yeah, Pumpe enters a martial trance. And the first Crondle has been smashed apart. He kicked off his head. <laughs> the militia... No, the militia commander stops the Crondle in the upper body with his steel spear tearing apart the muscle tearing apart the liver. Other has been opened by the check. The militia commander kicks the Crondle in the left foot with her left and the injured part collapses. But that's not it. Um, it's this Crondle, I guess. Oh, also stepped in the head and with the steel spear, so the steel spear actually ended the Crondle, not her Pumper's fighting skill. But they are just tearing through them, as you can see. <laughs> they don't stand a chance, he tries to run away and runs right into Tarkis. And the last Crondle also gets killed. Oh no, this time by the wrestler, punches the Crondle in the lower body with his right hand, bruising the muscle, bruising the right kidney. The Crandall is propelled away by the force of the blow. <laughs> so, um, Herr Pumpe having a really good day. The wrestler punches the Crandall in the left hand with his right hand and the injured part explodes into gore. Collapses into gore. <laughs> Gets blown off. And every time he, he hits him, like here, the wrestler kicks the Crandall in the lower body and uh, the Crandall is propelled away by the, by the force of the blow. So he's basically just kicking him away. And that's it. The last Crandall died. Um, the militia captain kicks the Crandall in the upper body with her right foot and the injured part collapses. The Crandall's right upper arm skids along the ground and the part splits into gone. Artery has been opened by the attack and the Crandall slams into an obstacle which kills him. He's slammed into the bridge. And here we go. The end of the arena fight. Let's lower... Oh, wrong lever. Let's lower the bridge. And make sure that all the corpses will stay where they are. And next episode we will have a Dwarven Daycare Service. Which means that with one pull of a lever we can solve all of our frame rate issues. It's not the way I wanted to do it, but it's the only way that is viable right now. I know, shame on me. But I couldn't do it in any other way. You can also, uh, by the way, set your arena as forbidden area. So you can be sure that your regular guys will not just run in and try to build something or clean something while there are still enemies in there. Or if you just want blood everywhere, it's also a viable option. Okay, um, let's just have a look around. There are still wild crundles running around. But everything else... Oh, a troglodyte baby! Everything else is caged. Oh, we need, still need to train this Jabra. I will not train the cave crocodiles because I've been told that they will not attack if they are trained. So I will just release them in a cave crocodile area. Where I can be sure that... Um, it will, won't be frozen in winter. So, because this area is actually frozen in winter, so I need to dig out a new area, and I guess I will do it around here, like make a moat here, really deep, and then I put the great crocodiles in. But we will see. We will see how that works out in the next episode of Dwarf Fortress Stone Embrace.